Come here, guys. Come on. This is 1.2 petabytes. And the last time we built a petabyte storage solution, it had to be spread out over multiple servers. Not anymore! With Seagate's new 20 terabyte Exos X20s, we are gonna be building a single 4U server that can hold over a petabyte of raw data. It's gonna be flipping crazy, and truthfully, it's hard to be that excited because the real reason we're building this is because of a data loss in our previous petabyte project that is making it so that we have to build a new server to copy all of the data off that server while we attempt to recover it. So I'm gonna be having fun, but in a, all of this is very sad and stressful kind of way. What I'm never sad about is telling you about our sponsor. Thanks to Signal RGB for sponsoring this video. With Signal RGB, you can control and sync your favorite RGB devices all from one app. Best of all, it's free. Download Signal RGB in the link below. I mean, it's mind blowing if you think about it. 20 terabytes of storage in a single drive. The original Wanix server, which was hard drive based by the way, had about 20 terabytes of storage, except that it was an entire 4U chassis like this one, full of one terabyte drives. Man, Wanix server was 20 terabytes up until like two years ago. One freaking drive. And the craziest part is last time we did a petabyte project, we wanted to get a full petabyte of addressable storage into a single chassis, but we fell short because I wanted a 75 drive version of the chassis. So it would be actually five of these rows, but there was a bit of a snafu and we didn't end up getting it done. The crazy thing is since then, we've gone from 16 terabytes maximum capacity to 20. So we are gonna have exactly what we were targeting, <laughs> except in 60 bays instead of 75. Now, I couldn't help noticing, Jake, that none of the hardware is in this. Well, it's kind of a long story. <laughs> Does it involve these bins of hardware over here? Yes, yes, so in there is actually the original hardware, if you look there, so I think it's a 26 core Xeon Gold, I think? 512 gigs of RAM, it would have had four HBAs in there at one point. But in between the process of this server being built and it arriving to us, I kind of decided I wanted our cache drives to be NVMe, not SATA. And unfortunately, oh. there's not really a lot of PCIe on here, there's probably enough. We probably could have put like some jank four splitter bifurcation thing in there, but uh, I figured we should go epic instead. We're going epic, ladies and gentlemen. Need that PCIe. It's kind of crazy how like as an enthusiast or a gamer, you don't really think about that as AMD's advantage over Intel in the server space. You kind of think of it in terms kind of, of huge. <laughs> performance yeah. or core count. I've or heard that's important. Eight channel memory, right? Like these are all things that as gamers we understand. But 128 PCIe lanes, when you're plugging this kind of shiz into your CPU, matters a lot. Yeah. What we ended up with is actually the XL60's turbo variant. So it's got a little bit bigger CPU than the base one, but if you wanted, like us, you could probably ask 45 drives and they maybe make you an epic system. It's just not something that they show on their website. You probably don't need to as long as you're just running mechanical drives, but because we want to put a bunch of NVMe drives in, we do need the extra PCIe. Now at this stage, we've got a couple of options. We can work on things together or we can divide and conquer, but the one thing I'm not flexible on is we need to take this thing and put it on one of those carts. Because if we load it up with hard drives and we have to move it again, I'm gonna lose my I already brought it downstairs, it was fine. No, no, but full of drives? Yeah, I brought it downstairs, full of drives. Also, it's better to carry it than put it on a cart. The cart is bad. It was an IBM study, look it up. You gotta have that like- That was across a, like- Parking, parking still, road. there's lots of bumps and stuff. Oh, God. It's gonna be fine. Look, I get it, you're kind of a small guy. You know, it's okay, it's gonna be okay. If you don't wanna carry it, we got other people for that. You know, you employ like 50 people. It's not, it's not saying anything, he's just putting drives in it. He's given up. Should we maybe, wait, hold on, hold on. Should we oh, do- Oh, now he doesn't want it to be heavy. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Jake. I'm sorry, Jake, is this not how you wanted the hard drives to go in? Oh, 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 shoot, oh, man, oh, I'm sorry. I just think I just... we should put the motherboard in and make sure that's working Oh, first. they just keep going in there. They just slide in so nice. 
love 45 drives mechanism. Look at this, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 terabytes, just like that. Oh yeah, bud. Let's actually talk a little bit about the drives that Seagate sent over. These are their data center enterprise grade drives. They run at 7,200 RPM. They've got 256 megabytes of cache each and a SATA 6 gigabit per second interface. They're gonna actually be pretty similar to the 20 terabyte IronWolf Pro prosumer NAS drives in terms of performance, but these have double the rated mean time between failure and almost double the rated annual workload. So they're just designed to run a little heavier. They're also $20 more expensive at MSRP, but a funny thing that we've noticed in the past is that these Exos drives often end up being less expensive once they've been on the market for a little bit. So these ones have only been at retail for about a month, month and a half. So the cheapest that we could find these specific drives was $571 each from a Newegg Marketplace seller. That puts this at, wait, $35,000 worth of drives. <laughs> And the funny thing is they're actually gonna send four more so we have some cold spares, so that would put us like 37.50. That's a good thing to have with any storage setup that has more than, I mean, realistically, a handful of drives. Realistically, we should have a hot spare. Mechanical devices do fail. It's something that happens and it's something that you have to be ready for. Holy crap, that's sexy. <laughs> this what? Is, this is like one of my favorite Epic boards for sure. Seven? PCIe 16X slots. Is that a USB type C on a server board? Yeah, it's also, it's all gen four too. We originally got this board for the sensible jellyfish fryer, but I think they originally sent the OG Epic version. Yeah, the non gen four one. Yeah, and then this is the gen four one that does Rome and Milan. Sorry, Yvonne, I'm filing the papers. This is my new wife. What happens when the new one comes out? Well then, uh... More out papers. With, off with the old, on with the new. <laughs> Jesus. What kind of Epic are we putting in here? Hmm, okay, so it's not a Milan, because we still can't get any of those. We have two, we finally got two. This is not one of them. This is a 7402P. It's the previous generation Rome chip. It's 24 cores, which is probably excess for this, honestly, but it should be pretty good. Once it's paired up with the 512 gigs of RAM we take from the old board. More funny things, <laughs> yeah. we don't have a CPU cooler for this that fits in there. We have this one, it's a U12, it's a little big. We'll though. just run it hot rod for now. Yeah, I think we'll just leave the top off. Can we just take a moment and talk about how the Molex connector has apparently been doing roids? <laughs> have oh, you seen these? Plug it back into the right one. What, are, what is this? It's all about having if a I steady just, hand. If I just blue right now? No, you wouldn't do I that. I would ruin both of our days, so I'm not gonna do that. Just a quick. <laughs> he was telling me what a great job I did. Yeah, you mean like what a great job I did, right? Well, someone did a great job. Whose name's on the channel again? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hey, look, you, got you strong words. You started it today. You 100% started it. Fix your it. petabytes yourself, damn you it. You started I'm it. I'm done. I'm through. You started it. Oh, God. Oh, no. What, uh, what, what, problem. what, what, what? Um, okay, so to use all the ports we want to use, we have to move a jumper. Oh, no. So right now they're both on the right. Two and three, yep. Two and three, two and three. So that's where we want it, actually. Perfect. Well, that was easy. I don't know if I believe that, though. That's fine, we'll find out soon enough. Worst comes to worst, we just have to switch it to the other side. Okay. Because then it would be on one and two, one and two. Okay. Easy. We're hoping that that's right. Okay, now Epic has no built-in RAID functionality. So fortunately, TrueNAS has a built-in redundancy function so that you can just install the OS simultaneously to both drives. And it's not RAID, it's but ZFS. it's a backup, which it's, is better. It's a ZFS mirror. Is it a it ZFS mirror? It literally just makes a Oh, I didn't Z even know it was using ZFS. Pool. Oh, well, cool. Yeah. This does not feel fine. It feels oh my god. Fine. Can you imagine though? No. I cannot imagine. I don't think this is built to be tipped like this. Huh. Okay, yeah. That's everything's fine. horrifying. So this is cool. These connectors right here are super cool. They can be used for SAS, SATA, or PCI Express. So it can cause some confusion because I thought they were U.2, which would be PCIe, like NV for NVMe drives. But actually they are are they SAS or SATA? Probably just SATA actually. Uh yeah, I think they're SATA. So we're just gonna connect this little breakout cable and bippity boppity, we'll plug these into our drives here and we're good to go. It's cool, it passes through the SATA power too. You see that? Yeah. So we actually do need four because 
story about our NVMe drives. They're not here yet. <laughs> in fact, not even two of the cables we need are here yet. The Oculink, wherever that is, to U.2 cables are not here yet. They were supposed to arrive today. Maybe they're just sitting in logistics. I don't know. Anyways, yeah. So we're going to do two 8 terabyte SATA drives that are from Micron, and we're going to do two 1 terabyte NVMEs. Those are going to be our intent log for CFS, which is almost kind of like a write cache, not really. And then our level 2 arc, which is just an extended read cache um, that adds on to the RAM cache that ZFS uses by default. Why didn't you take the... Well, they, I, they're there for in case. Mm -hmm. They're there in case. Get it? This is the case and they were in it. Andy likes it. Andy likes Andy it. Andy likes everything. You pay him to like it. I pay you to like it. Well, I'm just a bad it's guy. Just one of you is better at their job. <laughs> oh, yeah. Put her in the first slot there, bud. There it goes. Oh, yeah. Look at all that. PCIe, baby. We still got Sex two more, sl well, one more slot that works. Yeah. Wow, you mangled this cooler. What the heck? I did nothing to that cooler. You know I didn't do anything to that cooler. <laughs> Look at that part. I didn't this touch that. This was brand new. Was it really? Yeah. What happened? I don't know. Probably when you were fumbling it out. Probably both of us messed it up a bit. I'm sure. We might have a big problem, Jake. What? I don't know if I can plug in the front I.O. It's right angle on this board. Oh, who cares? Well, I can't get it in. Well, who cares? Okay. We, we could do it. We'd I have a new take... idea. We just take the pins and we just bend them up. I love it. Okay, I'll be back. Did you just pop that out for no reason oh, at all? Oh, I didn't know the screw wasn't in yet. What do you think I was doing? Picking my nose? like? I mean, usually you're not doing too much, so... Really? Mr. stands oh, there oh, and we hit it. We hit a cord here, boy. Walks up and unplugs what I'm working on. <laughs> I did the math. And LTTstore.com is a great deal. Check it out. We've got this new hoodie. Is it even on there yet? Uh, it will be by the time this video is up, I think. Sorry, you can finish your thought. I don't even remember what I was saying. <laughs> Doing the math? Oh, I did the math. So at one gigabyte a second, which I think is a little uh, optimistic. Optimistic for the old vaults, especially in a degraded state it would take seven and a half days if it sustained that the whole time <sighs> to move 700 terabytes. So, so what let's you're say saying 500 is megabytes a second, it'll take 15 minutes. I want to hear you say it. It's going to take a month. You're supposed to tell me I was right. You, you said right? it was going to take months. I well, said it was to going to take weeks. everything. Yeah. To do it three times. Three times? Twice. I don't want to have new vault stuff on here. I want to move it off and then move it back. Is that, like, is that unreasonable? I don't know. But I think we're ready to fire this thing up. Really? We ready? Are you ready, oh, well, you boys? You plugged the management port into it, I see. Are you ready? Wait, I see what? what you were saying. You plugged it into management? Yeah. That's what you wanted to do, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to plug the crappier one I into the management port. I thought you were just port. stupid. Oh. It smells like fire. That's not. Is it still post-coding? I mean, it's a server, so like. Yeah, it could take a minute. Asrock boards are sort of middle of the road as far as that goes, though, right? Speed? I think it's usually pretty quick, actually. Yeah, it's probably got to do memory training, though, for 512 gigs of RAM, so. Oh, it's booting! Nice! 170 seconds it's been going. Uh, hey, look! Look! 63? I think that's right. Oh, wait, no. no. that's not right. We're missing some NVMe. So we got our two NVMe's. Oh, the SATA drive, 6.99 terabyte. Yeah, so, so we're, we're missing, missing one, one of those. The SATA. And then we're missing two of these? Yeah, theoretically. Oh, bananas. Oh, I bet you it's those two. <laughs> you suck at this. You put those in. This is your fault. You distracted me. <laughs> that, those were very out. Oh, I can feel them. They're they're doing stuff now. Okay. I don't know why this boy is not working though. Okay. Uh, well, let's 65. Try and... We're at 65. Okay. We have all okay. our hard drives now. We're just missing. Okay. So tell me if that's the bad one. I don't know. I if guess it'll... we could have checked I the serial. I don't actually know if it'll. Oh, yeah. It could also be that this cable is bad. These cables suck. I've seen like tons of them fail. Well, we so. have another one of them. Serial number mismatch, it says. So it did pick up the drive then. It says SATA link is three gigabit per second. Oh no, it picked it up. Micron 4300. Okay, try to plug the other one in for a sec. Yeah, that cable might be bunk. Oh, it couldn't be the cable, Linus. Must be a bad Micron Enterprise drive. Yeah, for sure. Whoop. You know, with all, the, with all the crap that has taken place that did not make it into videos, it's probably just as well the vault gets wiped once in a while. <laughs> we back up. Look at that. We get 66, everything. baby. Nice. So we got 
900, 900. Those are our two NVMEs. Let me just switch this to 100. We got 6.99, 6.99, and the rest. Okay. Woo! Now we have to make a pool. Okay, let's do it. Um, Solve. Oasis. Sure. Let's call it Oasis. It's a data oasis. Good gravy. You have to select them one by one. Yeah. But I mean, I guess think that's of a how often you're champagne do this. problem. I think you can also hold control. I'm just, you know, whatever. RAID Z2 gives us two drive failures per VDEV before we actually sustain any permanent data loss, which from our recent adventure we found is not necessarily the be all and end all, but because <laughs> it doesn't save you from bit rot. Well, look, TrueNAS sets up a scrub for all pools by default monthly. Yeah. It just does it automatically. CentOS so had no you, such functionality. You can't screw this up. You can, but <laughs> yeah, all right. Anyways, um, should be fine. I want to listen to them initializing. Formatting? They're already initialized. The server's on. What do you mean? They're not doing anything. Oh, they're going now. That sounds terrifying. I know it's normal, but dun, 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 like dun, dun, enterprise dun, dun. drives are. We are doing data things. Wow, these are ones are getting kind of warm, actually. Maybe we should put the top on. Yeah, we probably should. Hey, look at that. Okay, so we have. Available 895 Tibby Bytes. Ho, 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 984 terabytes. Okay, so should we remake the array, just RAID Z1, so you can see more than a petabyte of usable? No, that's okay. RAID yeah. Z2 is bare minimum for yeah. this many We drives. still have 1.2 petabytes of raw storage, plus 32 terabytes of NVMe once it's done. So one point of clarification, each VDEV, so each grouping of 15 drives is running in RAID Z2. So that means we could actually theoretically lose up to eight drives before sustaining any kind of permanent data loss. But you'd have to get really lucky. I'm gonna call it Vault 3, okay? New, new Vault. No, I'm not doing it. I have power in this manner, and it's Vault 3. I don't care. One day I'm gonna come in on a weekend and just change it all. We got a network interface. Look, these two are 100 gigs. Sweet. One thing that's really smart to do on your storage servers, especially one with this many drives, is you can actually set up a scheduled smart task. Like on all of your drives, do a quick smart test, like once a yeah. month. And you can usually tell like if a drive's gonna die. Yeah. Just based on that. It'll like email you the results or That's whatever. one nice thing about mechanical drives is they tend to spit out some warnings before they actually completely give up the ghost. Too. Like it reallocated can. Not sectors. always though. Yeah. You got anything in here that's bad? I don't hope so. Spam log pickle Linus. How's it going, pickle linus? <laughs> I was making a thumbnail for one of my just like random troll streams on float plane. <laughs> so I just put that up there. <laughs> I killed him. Oh, there, there we, we go. go. Oh, there it is. 895 Tibby bites, I think. Anyways, the moral of the story is holy shit, that's a lot of storage. Is this a holy shit now? It could be. Now it's time for us to drop it in the server room and start a weeks long data transfer. It's probably gonna be like two weeks. In a use case where you need more IOPS, that is operations per second, maybe if you're video editing or you have a database running on this, you might wanna do a setup that has more VDEVs because typically it means you're gonna have better IOPS performance. In our case, basically everything going to this is sequential AF. We're moving like 500 to a terabyte of footage of yeah. just straight footage in later, one buddy. go. So it doesn't matter for us. If anything, we just want more capacity while still being safe. Yeah. And this is our, our middle ground. Actually, our, it's not really middle, it's like on our side ground. You know what I mean? Thanks to privacy.com for sponsoring this video. Valentine's shopping is well underway and privacy.com is here to help. With the growth of technology and ever increasing online fraud, keeping your banking information safe and secure is becoming more and more of a concern. And privacy.com lets you shop online, even at unfamiliar stores, with virtual credit cards that offer way more security and control than conventional cards. You never have to worry about being billed twice, getting upgraded to another service without your consent, or having to change your card information in the event of a hack. Privacy.com also allows you to set spend limits so that you can take control of your finances and stick to your gift budgets.
Their free service offers you up to 12 cards, and by upgrading to Pro, you'll be able to get 36 cards, more security features, and even 1% cash back. As a special bonus, if you sign up today, you'll get five bucks. It's five bucks! So check it out today at privacy.com forward slash Linus. That's privacy.com forward slash Linus. If you guys like this video, maybe go watch the video on the original petabyte project. Uh, it was a cluster. We actually needed a Gluster cluster, two different machines in order to reach this same capacity. It's come a long way.